Hey guys, welcome to Living the Logic. This is Manish Narayan. Today we're going to cover designing a banking system using .NET 8 and object-oriented principles. So let's get started. Uh, make sure you have Visual Studio Code installed or your favorite editor or IDE. Uh, in this video I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So um, before we get started, you need to have the right extensions installed. Uh, so if you head over to extensions, uh, you can search for C-sharp dev, and you should see um, a C-sharp dev kit. Okay, so go ahead and install that. That's going to allow Visual Studio Code to, you know, create new .NET projects using the standard templates that you might see in Visual Studio, the full IDE. So please go ahead and install C-sharp dev kit. Okay. Um, now to get started, uh, you'll once you install the dev kit, you'll see this create .NET project. Okay, so go ahead and click on create.NET project. Okay, and notice it will say at the bottom activating extensions, and then um, you should see a, a menu pop up for creating a.NET project. There we go. All right, you can search for console. So we're going to create a console app that helps us design our banking system. So choose a console app. Okay, uh, next it's going to ask you where you want to. Uh, you know, create your project. So I'm going to go ahead and choose C drive development. I'll create a new folder here. We'll call it our banking system. Okay. I'll select that folder and we can name the actual project banking system. Hit enter. And notice uh, the, the C sharp dev kit um, kind of walks you through some of the, the options for creating a project. So I'm going to choose create projects, hit enter. Okay, and in a second here, it's going to create a new project uh, in our banking system folder, uh, and it should have a program CS uh, that comes shipped with the console app, uh, as well as a solution file. Okay, so uh, this is out of the box using Visual Studio Code's C Sharp uh, Dev Kit. So make sure you have that installed. Again, um, you don't want to install that. You can you can start you know from the command line and create your project and then open the folder in Visual Studio Code. That's also fine. Again, feel free to use Visual Studio, the full IDE as well. Okay, so the very first thing is to kind of um, let's go ahead and increase the font a little bit. I'm gonna just resize this. All right. Uh, so what we'll do is create um, our first message here. So basic message console dot right line, and we will say uh, welcome to the banking system. All right, so uh, that's about it. Uh, we have our program. So in order to run it, go ahead and say view terminal. Okay, and instead of PowerShell, you can hit the plus button and we'll say uh, new command prompt. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kill these other PowerShells. And uh, in order to run it, you can just say .NET. Well, let's look at the menu first. We need to head over to our project file. So CD into banking system. Okay, dir, um, there's a project file. So here I can run .NET run, okay. So what's gonna happen first is uh, when you run a .NET project, it's gonna run all the package restore. Okay, it's gonna restore all the packages required in order to run this .NET 8 uh, banking system. So once that's done, it's gonna then execute console.writeline and then it should just print out uh, welcome to the banking system. And there it is right here, okay. so. Uh, again, this is just uh, a simple console app to help us get started, all right? Uh, the very next thing in order to follow object-oriented principles, we need to define some models, okay? So what I'm going to do is within the banking system, I'm going to add a new folder here, okay, new folder, and we'll call this models, all right? The very first model we're going to add, we'll say new file, and we'll call it the customer, all right, .cs. Now in the customer CS, we can define some properties of a customer. We can say, first of all, define the class. So say public class uh, customer. And uh, here, oh, oops. oh, customer. Okay. And uh, I think I accidentally turned on the telesense. So public class customer. All right. We're going to define some properties here. So public int, say there's a customer ID. All right, and with a getter setter, okay. Uh, we'll also have a public string name, 
get set. Right? And then we'll have finally a public string email get set. Okay? So that's our customer uh, class or customer model. Okay, I'm just going to minimize this a bit. All right? So very basic model. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we're going to create an abstract class to hold our account object. So our account will be abstract because we can have a checking account uh, and we can also have a savings account or, you know, uh, any other XYZ account, right? So here I'm going to add a new file and we're going to call that account.cs, okay? And in the account class, uh, basically we're going to have some defined properties. Uh, First of all, abstract class, and then some abstract methods for depositing funds and withdrawing funds. Okay, so we'll say public uh, abstract class account. Okay, and uh, inside the account, we'll say there's a public int account ID, the getter setter. Okay, we have a public uh, int customer ID, so an account holds a customer ID. Okay, and then uh, public decimal. Uh, we might have account balance, so there's a balance and it's a decimal type to hold our money, okay? And then we're going to create two abstract methods, okay? So uh, these, why are they abstract? Because, uh, again, the deposit and withdrawal can be implemented differently uh, if, you know, depending on it's, if it's a checking account or a savings account. So we can say public abstract uh, void deposit, and that's going to take in a decimal. All right, so this deposit method returns doesn't return anything, so it's a void return type. It's marked abstract, okay? And it does accept one argument, which is the balance or amount, okay? All right, and then, uh, oh, we're not going to implement it here, sorry. And then we're going to create one more abstract method called uh, withdrawal, okay, or withdraw. So abstract, again, a withdraw doesn't return anything, so we'll say withdraw, and again, it takes a decimal amount. Okay. All right, forgot the semicolon here. All right, so notice the abstract methods in this abstract class. There's no implementation here, um, but uh, whoever's going to extend uh, or inherit from account class needs to uh, implement the deposit and withdrawal methods. Okay. All right. So uh, next, uh, we're going to have a checking account class. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, uh, we're going to have a checking account class. So we'll say uh, right-click models, say new file, and we'll create a checking account. .cs. Okay, so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have a public class called checking account, and that's going to extend, okay, that's going to extend the account class that we created. Okay, all right. Now, if I hover over checking account, notice it throws an error because... Uh, since it's extending account, it needs to inherit and implement uh, the abstract members. So for withdraw and deposits, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. So what we'll do is override the deposit method. So if I hit tab, it'll actually auto-complete that. Okay. And then we're also going to uh, override the withdraw method. Right. So public override the withdraw method. Okay. Void withdraw. All right. Beautiful. Uh, now, in the deposit class, should be straightforward. Uh, we're just going to basically add our amount to our existing balance. So we'll say balance plus equals amount. Okay. Um, and then for the withdrawal, uh, we're going to have some sort of condition there, some sort of business rule. So we'll say if the amount that's being withdrawn is greater than the balance, so do we have enough funds, basically? Uh, if If that's... True, if the amount is greater than the balance, we don't have enough money, we'll throw a new exception, okay? And we'll call it invalid operation exception for now. Again, we can create custom exceptions later on. And we'll say insufficient funds, okay? Insufficient funds. Okay, and we'll throw an exception. Now, uh, if there is enough money in there, if the amount is less than or equal to the balance, we'll just subtract from the balance. So we'll say balance minus equals amount. Okay, we'll save that. So we basically have a deposit method and a withdrawal method in our checking account class, uh, which extends the account class. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is create a savings account class. So what we'll do is um, uh, go ahead and we can actually copy that um, savings account class and 
we'll just tweak it or you can just right click and say new file here and we'll say savings account okay dot cs all right now in here, here we're going to have a public class called savings account again that's also going to extend the account class the base class okay uh we're going to hold a local variable called uh interest rate so we'll say decimal uh interest rate okay get set and then we're going to now override the deposit and withdraw method so public override void deposit okay and we'll do the same for public for the withdraw override void withdraw okay now uh the deposit should work the same, right? Um, so basically, uh, we say balance plus equals the amount that's coming in. Okay. Now for the withdraw, for now, okay, uh, we will basically copy the, the same thing uh, as a checking account. We'll say if amount is greater than balance, then we'll throw a new exception, throw a new exception, invalid operation exception and we'll say insufficient funds okay uh, if not then again we'll just subtract out the balance okay all right um, and we'll add uh, so the check the saving account class is ready for now uh, initial version of it uh, we'll add one more model to handle our uh, transactions so we'll just call that the transaction CS model okay and here we're gonna have a public class called transaction okay and here we'll say public int transaction ID all right to hold a unique transaction ID we'll say public int account ID okay uh, so a transaction is this is an account ID a unique account ID and then we'll have a decimal uh, amount all right for the transaction amount and then finally we'll have uh, a date time to hold when the transaction occurred so we'll say date time transaction date okay getter setter all right so we have now um, our um, models defined okay all right hey guys if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content see you next time